in this lecture let us discuss about decision table testing which is a structured testing technique used to represent and analyze complex business rules and scenarios it helps to ensure that all possible combinations of inputs and conditions are considered so here this is mainly used to evaluate different combinations of inputs and their corresponding outputs or actions leading to more comprehensive test coverage this technique is particularly useful when dealing with systems that have multiple inputs and outputs allowing testers to validate the correctness of the software coming to some key concepts we have three important concepts or components here one is a condition then action and then rules what is this condition so these are nothing but the inputs that affect the decision making process so these inputs they can be either a boolean value like true or false or can have multiple values coming to the actions part actions are nothing but the expected outputs or responses based on the combination of conditions so these are nothing but the outputs or responses based on the combination of conditions next rules so here each unique combination of conditions lead to specific action right so here each rule represents unique combination of conditions and they specify expected out uh, expected actions for that combination structure of decision table so we we have various components here in decision table one is a condition column then action columns and then rules right so here condition is represented in column action is represented in column whereas rules they are represented in rows so condition is nothing but it's a column which represents a different condition action column here each column it represents different action or output whereas rules rows each row defines unique combination of conditions and their corresponding actions let us see one example here say suppose the conditions are user type order size and then discount code so for this so what i told you what is the condition they are the inputs that affect the decision making process right so these are nothing but the inputs user type order size and discount code then what is an action action is expected outputs or responses based on the combination of these conditions so you need to use these set of inputs in order to predict the response or expected output so here outputs are apply discount calculate delivery fee confirm order so we need to calculate these things based on conditions three conditions we have so first one is if the user is a new user and if the order size is small discount code is valid then the output will be yes yes he can apply for discount and also standard fee will be calculated for delivery then confirm order yes order will be confirmed for that for this type of user so these are the three conditions based on which we are predicting out outcomes apply discount whether we can give discount to that person or whether there is any uh, fee in the delivery so here will calculate the delivery fee and then whether uh, it is confirm order or not in the same way if the user is a new user so user is of two types right new and returning so we are taking new and returning and we are considering all possible combinations so order size is three three types right small medium and large so we are taking all three combinations of order size after this again we have valid and invalid for discount code so we are taking all valid combinations all invalid combinations so along with new what is the other user type it is returning so for returning order size can be anything 
and we are taking two conditions valid and invalid so for calculating the discount now so based on this say if the user is new small and invalid so if the discount code is invalid then he can't apply for discount right but still he can get the order then coming to this uh, new large and invalid again if the discount code is invalid answer will be no for apply discount and standard fee will be calculated yes confirm order user type is a returning so returning uh, user and order size can be anything here say if he is a valid uh, if he use this valid discount code again he can apply for discount and fee will be reduced fee again confirm order can be done decision table testing is particularly useful for complex systems where multiple inputs can affect the output so here you can see multiple inputs they are affecting the output so if you take this user type return and order size any then this here you can see in these last two rows if it is a valid code then answer will be different if it is an invalid one again answer will be different so based on the input type you can see the effect on the output right so in the same way you can take second example loan approval system so here conditions are nothing but the input values so we have credit score based on credit score income level and uh, employment status we are predicting the action so whether loan can be approved to that user or whether bank will request for more information from the user or whether it will approve or reject the loan so credit score again we have two categories high and low and income level above threshold and below threshold then employment status employed and unemployed so here if you take this credit score is high and income level is above the threshold value and if he is employed then automatically loan will be given for that person and bank he a bank won't uh, request for more information even loan won't be rejected so it will be granted then coming to this case if the credit score is high and income level is below the threshold value or below the limit and if he is employed here loan uh, loan won't be given for him because income level is below the limit or below the threshold value and bank will request for more information so more details should be provided by the user to the bank in that case again loan will be given for that user let us see one more example that is loan approval system so here the conditions are credit score income level and employment status based on these inputs we need to predict the expected outcome so that is whether the loan will be given for that user or whether bank will request for more information for from user or reject loan so if you take the credit score so first one if the credit score is high and income level is above the threshold employment status if he is employed then loan will be given for him and no need to request for more information and loan won't be rejected right so here we are approving the loan for that person whereas if the income level is low and whereas if the income level whereas if the income level is whereas if the credit score is high income level is above the threshold and if he is unemployed then loan won't be given for that person and obviously request for more information so if the information is provided then loan won't be rejected for that user and if you take the last case credit score if it is low and income level is above the threshold value and if he is employed 
again loan will be given and it won't request for more information because this person is an employed person so no need of any information and then reject loan so as it already approved the loan no need to reject that right so here based on the multiple inputs output will be predicted let us take the third example employee leave management system conditions are employee status he employee can be full time employer part time and leave type so whether it is a sick leave or vacation leave leave balance whether he is having enough number of uh, leaves or whether it is insufficient that means he already used the leaves so based on this input types we need to predict output so whether to approve leave for or uh, deny leave or request more information so if you take this say if the user or if the employee is a full time employee leave type is sick and if he is having enough number of leaves then leave will be approved for him and deny leave that is no because leave is approved as he is having sufficient no need to deny that and no need to request for more information also and if the employee is a part time employee and if it is a sick leave leave balance it can be anything say sufficient or insufficient then if it is sufficient leave will be approved if it is insufficient then deny leave no because we are assuming this any case as sufficient case in that case the uh, here uh, no need to deny the leave and no need to request for more information also then coming to this part time so if the employee status is part time and leave type is vacation and if he is not having enough number of leaves in that case leave will be rejected that is approve leave is no and deny leave yes because leave is rejected so here request more information no they don't need any information right they'll just check this balance whether it is available whether the leaves are available or not 